then I think uh, we should move along uh, with our first speaker. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Thomas Canterman. He is a, a lecturer at FOM University in Germany. Um, he did his PhD at the LMU in Munich and uh, then has had uh, various um, uh, research appointments and is now, as we say, um, uh, has been, I think, for the last five years or so, has been uh, at FOM. He's also a member of the, the Work Time Society that uh, focuses on shift work, and he's also a founding member of the Daylight Research. So Thomas is going to talk about Let the Sun Shine In. So I will stop sharing and hand over to you, Thomas. Thank you very much, Deborah. So um, let me share my, my little presentation here. So it's a pleasure to, to speak at this event and to, to start introducing the topic um, in terms of, of sunshine. So it's, it's a bit, maybe a bit silly, this, this, um, this title, um, but, but I want to give you an impression of why we think daylight is, is important. Certainly, there's more research needed, and, and, and along the slides, you probably will recognize where certain gaps are. So we do live on an illuminated planet. I think that's obvious to everyone. And for millions of years, it was daylight, and uh, we had dark nights. Occasionally, there was some moonlight, but basically, it was, it was a clear distinction between bright days and dark nights. And this is one of the themes of these presentations here that this distinction becomes a bit more, more blurry and, and distorted. So you see on this image on the right side, the, the illuminated globe by artificial light, which is one of the things we are concerned about when nights become too bright. Um, and why are, we, why are we interested in light in the first place? Is because we have this biology, um, the circadian rhythm or the body clock or endogenous clock, so there are various terms, it's like an, like an endogenous body calendar, as you wish, where everything that, that happens in your body is, 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 is termed. So everything is, is pre-programmed genetically when to happen, when enzymes are produced, when, when proteins are produced, when, when, you, when you start sleeping, when you wake up, et cetera, et cetera. And this is, this is it's a tight network, which is synchronized to the progression of, of dawn and dusk. So we need bright days and ideally dark nights to keep this body clock, the, the circadian system, entrained, as we call it, so stably synchronized to the environment. So how does this entrainment look? This is a quick comic on this. So we, we have this, this, this idea that we have these um, synchronized rhythms. You see here melatonin and body temperature which are the most studied um, parameters in this, in this field and the sleep-wake rhythm. And they are connected to each other. They are synchronized. And when your melatonin goes up during the sleep period, so the, 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 the shadowed area is the sleep and where you have the sun symbol here, this is the day. So usually melatonin goes up, has its peak during the night, and then it, 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 it falls down again. And parallel to this, your body temperature drops and starts increasing. So about now your body temperature is reaching the highest point um, at later this, this afternoon. And when these rhythms become desynchronized, we do know that there are um, problems <laughs> related to this. And this is a quick list on this. Um, basically, um, any pathology or health problem you, you can imagine is at, at some level at some level, directly or indirectly related to sleep or circadian misalignment or disturbed circadian rhythms. So when we have not slept properly, we become a bit, a bit um, grumpy and, and our mood suffers. And if this continues for many nights, then our metabolism suffers and then our cardiovascular system suffers. And even things like cancer are on the table. So it's um, something we are very concerned about and to understand how our environment, our lifestyle, light dark exposure is related to this. Um, it's not just um, a medical burden, it's also an economic burden, which has been estimated by people at the Rund Institute in, um, in England. Um, here for, for Germany, for instance, or for, for the United, uh, for United Kingdom, 
um, quite quite a, a big number of, of of loss in productivity, so money that is lost due to sleep loss. So there's there's a strong incentive to um, better understand what's what's going on. And the big question is, what's the role of daylight in this? And this is one of the ideas why the Daylight Academy has been founded, um, to bring people together to better understand this. Um, and one of the reasons, or one of the ideas is, uh, one of, or one of the um, um, things that propels our, our research is the idea that we, as, as, as a collective, as a society, we are underexposed when it comes to daylight. So this is examples of three studies, one in, in the UK. In the middle, this is um, from various populations, approval analysis, and then we have data from the US. And they basically all speak the same language, that on average, we have one or two hours of daylight exposure on average. Uh, on holidays, it's much more, on free days. Uh, we think that that these numbers that we get on holidays should be on the on the regular days because it would help our um, health to be better. So this is one of the of the findings that that around the globe we see that that humans spend more and more time indoors and, and too little time too little time outdoors. Um, this is um, an example here from from a study in the US and they had a very simple question how does sleep and health differ between people who have, a window at the workplace compared to those who don't have a window at the workplace. And it comes very clear that those who have no window at the workplace, so no daylight at the workplace, have more physical problems and poorer sleep. And those with a window had more sleep, longer sleep. And we, we do think, of course, this is good. So there's a strong incentive to have workplaces um with daylight or at least if there are workplaces without windows to guarantee that these um, workers have regular access to um daylight so that from time to time they go outdoors or to have daylight in the break room for instance so one idea is to get more daylight into these people um ideally we would spend much more time outdoors and this is an example here from um, a study that has been formed in, in the United States in, by the group of Kenneth Wright in Colorado. And he went to a, a camping trip with um, some people. And the, the, the um, strong evidence here is that um, they maximize the light exposure, of course. So you see here around 1,000 lux when they were in their office environment, and then they went camping for a week, and they had four times this, this, this light exposure. And interestingly, they, after this week of camping, um, they looked at the melatonin, and they, they saw that the, the onset of melatonin is very close to, um, to the sunset. And um, when dawn, the, we had the, 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 the down slope of the melatonin, and in the middle of the solar night, you had the peak. So after one week of increasing light exposure and decreasing light exposure in the evening, so more light during the day, less light in the in the evenings and in and, and, and the night, um, a very, very strong um, synchronization process here, which which beautifully shows how our circadian system is is um, is um, aligned to the to the light dark cycle. Um, of course, we cannot all go for camping. So we had a couple of years ago, we had this question in, at the University of Groningen, um, here led by um, our PhD student at the time, Julia Zerbini, who now is at the University of Augsburg in Germany. Um, we were interested, what happens if we manipulate light exposure at people's homes? And we had very, very simple protocols, simply asking people to not close the curtains in their bedrooms to get more daylight. Um, and we asked them to do this for 14 days, and we saw that within one week there was um, um, an advance in the melatonin, and this advance in melatonin correlated with the with the additional daylight in the morning. So again, good evidence that that we that we can manipulate or we can impact on our biology when we are getting more light into our rooms. And this is one of the discussion points at this meeting. Um, what ways, what means, what strategies can we develop or do we have to get more daylight 
into our rooms um, for the cases when we, we cannot go outdoors, which is which is most of the time for certain reasons. So the, the other side is um, that we know that um, light during the day synchronizes our body clocks, light in the evenings and especially at night interferes with this process. And we have this term, what we call Zeitgeber, Zeitgeber strength. So bright days and dark nights represent a strong Zeitgeber. And if you play around with this, you see you see shifts in, in these circadian phases. So this is an example of getting more daylight into people, which shows an effect by simply not closing the curtains and getting more daylight onto your pillow. And then we ask the reverse question, what happens if we reduce light exposure in the evening? And we ask people to wear orange sunglasses for two weeks. Um, ideally, you want to change the lighting in the environment which is which is a bit more more extreme but um we simply asked to to wear before before they went to sleep for about two to three hours to wear these orange sunglasses and also here we did see that within one week we could advance their melatonin by by a bit, a bit more on average a bit more than half an hour and, and their sleep onset as well so we didn't ask. We didn't ask for anything else. Just just wearing these orange sunglasses to protect their eyes from um, blue light and light in in general. So light intensity went down and, and the blue light exposure. So especially for those who struggle to to, to find sleep. Um, so instead of advising this to everyone, but for, for those people who are sensitive to light in the evening and those who have sleep difficulties. Um, trouble falling to sleep, is that sure? This could be one way to help them um, seeking better and falling falling asleep better. And one of the ideas here is if you if you decrease light exposure in the evening and at night, you 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 could you could prime the system and help your, your circadian system to to get more out of the daylight. And in reverse, we know that if you have more daylight, so the more daylight you have, or the brighter in general, the brighter your days are, the more light your circadian system receives during the day, there's good evidence that this is at some level protective against um, artificial light in the evening. Um, it's, it's, it's coined under the term light history. Um, so the brighter the days, the, the the more resistant your circadian system seems to be against um, artificial light. So there's good evidence in this, um, and you you can play around with this and um, see how how this impacts on your sleep. So this is especially I think relevant for those who have difficulties finding finding sleep. Um, another thing is the daylight savings time, um, which is basically a social convention. It's it's we don't we don't save daylight, we don't save time or anything. We just change the clock. So it's a man-made uh, thingy to to change the clocks and um, a social convention that for seven months in a year we agree to go to work an hour earlier, and this leads to changes in the light exposure and especially those who are late from their biology late chronotypes who biologically sleep late and wake up late um th those these are the ones who are most concerned by this and and, and um suffer from this so there's 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 good research um and accumulating research and very clear evidence so there's no sign that the daylight savings time is is, is good for health that there's no contradiction in this science and uh, we are working and, and helping and trying to to convince politics to change these these regulations. Ideally, it was introduced to save energy. That didn't work out. Um, so there's a number of studies showing that that this this doesn't doesn't um, really really work out. So that that needs to be abolished. Another thing is that needs to be concerned or, or, con or discussed more more in detail um, when it comes to daylight and it needs to be researched more is shift work. Um, so shift work exposes so when, when people work shift and especially when they work nights they're exposed to light during the during the night and we had this this study here in Germany at the at the um, university hospital here in Bochum a couple of years ago where we collected information in nurses um, how much light they received 
and I like to share this with you because because I think there's there's some some good ideas here how we can may, maybe introduce daylight also to to help shift workers. Um, we saw that that during night shifts or when when these women were working nights, they had on average four hours more light across the day. So in in total, their days become bright brighter. You could say they lost <laughs> they lost four hours of darkness in these in these days so the question is if could could a daylight intervention help um being being protective at some at some level in in, in shift work um from the social perspective the, those women with children younger children um had more light exposure in the afternoon because they went to the play, playground with these children um similar probably like walking a dog um so this could be um or it gives some good indication how our lifestyle interferes or manages or directs this, this light exposure and there were differences between chronotypes late chronotypes had more light in the morning evening and intermediates more in the afternoon so the big question is of course how daylight could help here but shift work certainly is one of the things that, that strongly interfere with the with the um, circadian system so to sum it up, um, it's it's overwhelmingly clear, and there's no contradiction that health and well-being do rely on healthy sleep, undisturbed sleep, restorative sleep, um, in dark environments, and our sleep is tightly regulated and connected to our circadian system. So when the when the circadian system is is not properly entrained, not properly synchronized, it. it easily happens that sleep gets compromised so they are they are tightly working together ideally if in trained uh, our circadian clocks help that sleep occurs at night um this is the usual case and the circadian system works best in conditions of bright days and dark nights so there's very clear evidence here so for the future um and this is it, it sounds simple as it stands here but it's very complicated to get this into practice one thing is to to abolish the alert savings time and um, it, it, it should be promoted so this idea should be promoted much more strongly that we should get rid of this um we should more wisely decide where we apply shift work the number of shift workers has increased in the last years globally um and it should be really really a strong social discussion about wh where do we really need shift work and where can we can we um can we stop that um we we do know the strong correlation between daylight exposure and health and especially for those who have sleep difficulties or health problems we should find ways to help these people to get more daylight and the last point on this list is what we also will discuss here and it's, it's the, um, the 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 transfer to the next speakers um how can we manipulate light in our environments how can we make wiser lighting environments in our homes and workplaces um, cost effective um, energy saving and of course more using daylight and this is what we hear in the next presentation so thank you very much for your attention and uh, i'm very curious about the next discussions um, this afternoon Thank you.